Shalakaya Chakshurum Miditam Yena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stavitam Yena Bhutave Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Rati Sapadankitam One day Shri Guru Shri Uta Parakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnamamsha Shri Rupam Sagaratam Sagaratam Vitam Transdativam Sarvetam Savadutam Varigana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Param Sagaratam Shri Vishakam Vitam Shram He Krishna Karna Sindhu Dina Mando Jagatate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kancha Nagorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishavanyo Sukhe Devi Paramami Hari Priye Vancha Kalta Tarubhyashta Kripa Siddhya Varevacha Paditanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha Namo Krishna Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Prasharine Nirvishesha Shunya Bhavi Paschatya Deshatane Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Vakadana Shri Vasari Gaurabhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 So what's coming up? Anything big? Anything significant? It is Gorpuni. So what do we know about Gorpuni? It is the appearance day of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes. What else? Well, we consider it, it is actually the most auspicious day of the year, the parents of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, more Purnima. Now we may think, I don't know, there's so many auspicious days in the year. Our calendar is chock full of so many wonderful festivals and wonderful uh, celebrations, great appearance days. Some disappearance days, some very important Ekadashi, Janmerja Ekadashi. We have festivals like Govardhan Puja and Janmashtami. So that's a big um, um, qualification to say it's the most important day. But for Gaudiya Vaishnavas, um, it is the most important day. And it really marks the new year, uh, it is the beginning. Um, so Today, tomorrow, and Sunday, the three consecutive days where we'll be discussing um, the glories of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the, the glories of Gaur Purnima. So, um, this Chaitanya Charitamrita is um, really a treasure that has been given to us by uh, Srila Prabhupada. And we can sometimes note the significance of things by some of the stories behind the manifestation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, or specifically Chaitanya Charitamrita. So, this um, Srila Prabhupada actually completed 
The translation of Chaitanya Charitamrita, before he completed Srimad Bhagavatam. So you know that you know Srila Prabhupada came, he was at an advanced age. So he was not certain when you know he may wrap up his Leela. So he wanted to ensure that we have this Chaitanya Charitamrita in full intact. So he actually completed this before. In all the places he has explained that Chaitanya Charitamrita is like the postgraduate study. Srimad Bhagavatam is like the graduate study. Bhagavad Gita is like the beginning study. You know, and so we see this sometimes in that um, um, position. But um, we also see that you know, Srila Prabhupada encouraged that we, can, we should read all together as well. It is not that one has to master one, then to the next, then to the next. And specifically, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita is so full of mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And with the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, we can make great progress in devotional service. Anybody finds devotional service too easy? Anybody? Anybody finds some challenges, some obstacles in the process of practicing devotional service? A couple of you? Oh, how fortunate. The rest of you. Okay, everybody? Yeah. Well, Krishna Skaviraj Goswami gives an extraordinary benediction. And it's not a benediction, it's a statement. And it's a fact. He says in Chaitanya Charitamrita that whatever is difficult becomes easy. Who likes to make difficult things easy? <laughs> right? We all do. We're all looking for that in life, you know, particularly material life, right? How can I make cooking easy? How can I make cleaning easy? How can I make work easy? How can I make this? Right? We want to make the difficult easy. So Krishna is coming out to us and he says, whatever is difficult becomes easy when one approaches Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But there's a flip side to that also. Whatever is easy becomes difficult when one does not approach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> so, but we take the first part of that verse really dear to heart. You know, whatever um, challenges we uh, face in the path of devotional service, there are so many, uh, you know, obstacles and allurements and, 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 and challenges we face. How to overcome them and how to overcome them with great success, it is by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that mercy, we can all experience tangibly in our own experience. But if we take that statement from Krishna Asparagas Goswami and really embed it in our hearts. So whenever we are faced with some feeling of, I can't do it, this cannot be done, I'm finding, just pray to Gauranga Mahaprabhu. Just pray to Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And see the potency of this mercy. Even the production of this Chaitanya Charitamrita, um, um, how it manifested, Prabhupada gave what would externally be viewed as an impossible deadline for the devotees who were transcribing all of his tapes and putting them into the typing them up and typesetting and publishing. And they had estimated like some, you know, a couple of years to finish all the books. That Prabhupada had finished all the tapes. And Prabhupada said, two months, something like that. And <laughs> the devotees were perplexed. That's impossible. They thought one or two volumes could be done in that time. But by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and by the mercy and instruction of Srila Prabhupada, how long did it take them to do it? They met the deadline. And it shows... Um, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can truly move mountains um, when we really surrender to him. And so um, his mercy knows no bounds. It is truly unlimited. And that's why we say, Namo Mahavadanaya. It's a Sunday, which is the actual day. It is a full moon day. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared um, in the on the full moon day of the month of Falgun, which takes place between February and March in our um, Western calendar. He appeared in the 
uh, in the Western year was 1486. Uh, it's a little over 500 years ago in Navadri, uh, Mayapur, um, which is about three to four hours from Kathmandu. So um, this appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as I mentioned, is, is really um, very, very important and it's a great opportunity for us to make great progress in the process of devotional service. So today, I thought we could discuss a little bit about why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared and what his mission was. Because if we understand his mission, then we can actually take advantage of the potency of this great day, this great festival uh, appearance. So um, we'll discuss that maybe a couple of pastimes uh, about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then uh, tomorrow we'll discuss some of the you know, more uh, confidential reasons that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, appeared. And then on Sunday uh, we'll discuss uh, some of his teachings specifically what and how he taught the process of devotional service. So that's how we discuss. So, um, Jaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is he? First and foremost, we must understand who is Jaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because this is very um, um, uh, confidential. <clears throat> confidential in the sense it's not so widely known. So Jaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. He is Krishna himself. He is not avatar. He is avatari. So he is the source of all incarnations. So Krishna can expand himself into so many different incarnations. Like we have Narsimha Dev, Purim Avatar, you know, Lord Ramchandra. We have so many wonderful, beautiful um, expansions. But at times Krishna himself comes as well. So we know that Krishna himself appeared uh, at the end of Dwapar Yuga, um, and we read from Bhagavad Gita, and that was a conversation between Krishna and Arjuna. And so that is obviously the Supreme Lord coming himself. Well, he comes again himself as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he comes in a very specific mood and for a very specific purpose. So we'll read a little bit from the third chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, uh, which explains. Um, why he came and what was his mission and, and purpose. Okay, and I'll read um, from chapter 3 today. You can repeat after me the invocation for reciting Chaitanya Chaitanya. Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda. Jaya 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 Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda. Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda So we'll read again from Adi Lila, chapter 3. The title of the chapter is The External Reasons for Lord Chaitanya's Appearance. So we'll read a few verses. Um, so in the, pre the verses leading up to what we'll read, just for context, um, Krishna Skavirat Goswami is explaining that Krishna appears once in the day of Brahma. So sometimes we wonder, oh, why I, you know, I was born in this age of Kali Yuga, it's so fallen and so difficult. But actually it is a very, uh, an extraordinarily potent and auspicious time. Um, because in the day of Brahma, there are actually 994 Kali Yugas, Dwapar Yugas, Sat Yugas, and Taita Yugas. So each Yuga cycles 994 times. And the day of Lord Brahma is 4.3 billion years, and the night of Brahma is also 4.3 billion years. So 4.3 billion years if you kind of mapped it out on a timeline. 
Then we say that we appear just 5,000 years after Lord Krishna. That's very, very recent. 5,000 years in our lifespan seems very long, but in comparison to a single day of Brahma, it's very recent. And you can see if there's one in 194 Kali Yugas in which um, Krishna has just recently appeared. But in that time when Krishna himself appears at the end of Dwapara Yuga and performs his Krishna Leela, immediately following in that Kali Yuga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears. It is only in those specific, and specifically it's the 28th Yuga cycle of the 7th Manu and the day of Brahma. So Vaivasvata Manu is the seventh of the fourteen Manus and the twenty. So it's very prescribed and very exacting in when Krishna appears and when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears. And the importance for us in that is understanding that actually we're very fortunate to still have intact the birthplaces or the appearance places of both Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. To have some of the very potent places where we can Absorb where we can understand this knowledge and see um, how um, one can find perfection of life. So we're very, very fortunate. So Krishna Skavi Goswami establishes that uh, in the beginning, saying that we should understand and appreciate the importance of what we have. And he now is relaying um, some thoughts from Krishna. So Krishna says, Lord Krishna enjoys his transcendental pastimes as long as he wishes, and then he disappears. After he disappearing, he thinks thus. And now this is the 14th verse, and this is Krishna thinking. He says, For a long time I have not bestowed unalloyed loving service to me upon the inhabitants of the world. Without such loving attachment, the existence of the material world is useless. In the purport, Prabhupada writes, the Lord seldom awards pure transcendental love, but without such pure love of God, free from fruitive activities and pure speculation, one cannot attain perfection in life. You can see Krishna himself is saying, for a long time I have not bestowed unalloyed loving service. And, and without that, what is the value of this material world? So he continues in 15. Everywhere in the world, people worship me according to scriptural injunctions. But simply by following such regular principles, one cannot attain the loving sentiments of the devotees in Rajabhumi or Vrindavan. So following all the regular principles, and according to scriptural injunctions, people may follow. But still, Krishna is saying, one cannot attain the loving sentiments of these devotees. Then in 16 it says, Knowing my opulence is the whole world looks upon me with awe and veneration, but devotion made feeble by such reverence does not attract me. And then the purport by Shula Paroka. After his appearance, Lord Krishna thought he had not distributed the transcendental personal dealings with his devotees in Dasya, Sakya, Vatsali, and Madhurya. One may understand the science of the Supreme Personality of Godhead from the Vedic literatures and thus become a devotee of the Lord and worship Him with regular the principles described in the scriptures. But one will not know in this way how Krishna is served by the residence of Rajabhumi. One cannot understand the dealings of the Lord in Vrindavan simply by executing the ritualistic regular principles mentioned in the scriptures. By following scriptural injunctions, one may enhance his appreciation for the glories of the Lord. But there is no chance for one to enter into the personal dealings with Him. Giving too much attention to understanding the exalted glories of the Lord reduces the chances of one entering into the personal loving affairs of the Lord. To teach the principles of such loving devotional service, the Lord decided to appear as Lord Chaitanya. So, Krishna continues, I'll, I'll skip a couple of verses, and this is now verse 19. He says, I shall personally 
inaugurate the religion of the age, Nama Sankirtana, congregational chanting of the holy name. I shall make the world dance in ecstasy, realizing the four loving mellows of devotional service. I shall accept the role of a devotee, and I shall teach devotional service by practicing its song. Who is saying, who is this I? This is Krishna. Lord Krishna himself is making this statement. So what is his maybe regret or lamentation? Not enough mercy. Not enough mercy. Ananya Bhakti Krishna is experiencing this himself. So in, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, you know, bhakto namaskudu. He says, you do these four things, just pure bhakti. He says, sarva dharma paritya jamaamitam shanamudra. You abandon everything when you surrender unto me. But what is, what is our misfortune? We're still, we don't know how. Mm -hmm. And we're not willing to do it. Let's just be blunt. Let's just be blunt. We're not willing to do it. Willing because we have some, you know, impurities. But it, it holds us back. So Krishna told everything exactly how to achieve perfection of life. He told Arjuna, if you want unlimited bliss, simply, ma may come. Surrender unto me. Give up everything else. That's all you have to do. But still, we're not ready. So Krishna is lamenting. But still, he is not taught exactly how to practice it in action. So for that, he appears as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the mood of a devotee, right? He says, I shall accept the role of a devotee and I shall teach devotional service by practicing it myself. So when Krishna comes in the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he doesn't project himself or announce himself as the Supreme Personality of God. Why? Because he is teaching the service to the Supreme Personality of God in the mood of a devotee. Tomorrow we'll discuss which devotee specifically. But this is the key. And um, a later verse uh, explains the rarity of this um, great position. <clears throat> not finding the verse. But in essence, um, and we see this with the pastime of Advaita Acharya, that he says that no other incarnation, no other avatar is able to bestow this pure devotional service like as Krishna himself did. So we know in studying, um, when we celebrated the Vaita Acharya's appearance, the Vaita Acharya is Mahavishnu and Sadashri, very potent. And he was convinced he was not going to be able to break the attachments to material life himself. And he said, I can't do it. Krishna, you yourself have to come. And so he worshipped Krishna with Tulsi, what, Tulsi leaves and Ganges water and begged. He said, Krishna, only you coming as yourself can actually bestow this upon us. So this um, is the potency of, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and who he is. But the, the, the challenge we have is understanding the value of what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is doing. Just like a child. If you give a child five chocolates in his left hand, and in the right hand you offer five diamonds, which the child will take? Okay. Every time? Yes. Every time. Now, would we say that is an intelligent decision? Would that be wise? No? 
Why? You can buy lots of chocolate with your hands. You can buy a heck of a lot of chocolate with your hands. So what's the problem? Why does the child select the chocolates over the diamonds? You never know the value of the diamond. Doesn't know the value of the diamonds. So when we don't know the value of something, what happens? We let it go. And who loses in that situation? We all lose. Right? So by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, he is really putting strongly in our consciousness the value of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. Because most of us don't actually know what is the value. We say, okay, Krishna is lamenting this place. But still, we don't appreciate what it is that he is giving. So Krishna, we, we say, Namo Mahavadanaya, Krishna Prema. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving love of Krishna. Now to most, love of Krishna feels like to the child diamonds compared to chocolates. Million dollars? That I know what to do with. Love of Krishna? Not sure what that means. So you give, you offer Krishna Prema or a million dollars to a hundred people. How many of them will take Krishna Prema? Zero. Zero. Right? And why? Because we don't know what is Krishna. What is so Srila Prabhupada in the beginning of Nect Nectar of Devotion explains very sweetly uh, in the preface that actually we are looking for happiness. Right? We all want happiness. That's it. At the end of the day, we want happiness. Nobody wants to be unhappy. And we're all searching for it from so many different means. More wealth, more fame, more status, more health, more this, more that. Right? But at the end of the day, we want it because we want more happiness. But Srila Prabhupada very eloquently describes that actually the happiness we are searching for is love. You can be the richest person in the world. But if you don't have someone to lovingly share that wealth with, you'll not be happy. You can be the most famous person in the world. But if you have no love in your life, you'll be miserable. You can be the most beautiful, the strongest, most intelligent. But those opulences must be associated with the presence of love. Then one experiences the value, the desired happiness. Now, then we get to the, well, what is love? So Srila Prabhupada explains that we have gone through our whole journey in material life trying to repose our love to so many different things. But why do we go from one thing to another and to another? Why do we keep switching? Not satisfied. Not satisfied. Whatever it is I'm looking to gain from that loving relationship is not being satisfied. So I have to search for the next thing. And the next thing. And the next thing. Because there's not the reciprocation back. So Prabhupada explains that until one comes to learn to repose their love to Krishna, one will never find that satisfaction they desire. That reciprocation will always be lacking something. And it's very logical, right? If I am exchanging love with someone, their ability to reciprocate is limited. Because they are also limited. They are imperfect. They don't know exactly what I'm thinking. <clears throat> and we see this in marital relationships, right? All conflict arises around of not understanding each other. Right? That's because we don't have perfect knowledge. But when we engage in a loving relationship with Krishna, what is his reciprocation with us? Because he knows exactly what is in each and every one of our hearts. He knows exactly how each of us desire to be reciprocated with. And he's never limited by time, by amount, by energy. No. So Prabhupada says that 
when we learn to love Krishna, then actually we'll find that complete and perfect unending happiness that will go on eternally. It will never end. And not only that, each day that happiness will grow and grow and grow. And when we learn to love Krishna, then all the other things that we have tried to love in the past will actually become fulfilled. So it is not that by loving Krishna, we are ignoring all the other aspects. And he gives the beautiful comparison of watering the root of a tree. When you water the root of the tree, all the individual branches are nourished. So when we learn to repose our love to Krishna, then we actually will find this supreme happiness. And all around us, those that we love and are trying to love today, will also become enriched and nourished. And so, the whole uh, nectar of devotion is speaking about how to bring about, how to scientifically practice and bring about this love of Krishna. But this is the greatest treasure of the whole universe. Because it gives the eternal bliss and happiness. And if you go onto Amazon and you want to buy a product that gives the unlimited happiness, what price we would put on it? <laughs> you can't even put a price on it. So this is Krishna Prem, love of the Supreme Lord. It is the greatest thing one can acquire. And that is why Krishna was lamenting uh, in his uh, discussion here that I have not taught this. He's taught so much. He's given all the Vedas. He's given all the Upanishads. He's given so much Shastra. He has given Bhagavad Gita. He has given the Mahabharata all this. And he's still saying, I haven't given one thing. And this one thing is the greatest treasure. Without it, the whole, everything else is useless, he says. And just so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give us, to teach us, these are diamonds. Let go of these silly material attachments. This is the real gem of life. And that is Krishna. Love of Krishna. So that is why he is Mahaprabhu. But even more so, when we want something of high value, what do we have to give often? If you want to buy diamonds, what do you have to do? Put in time. Put in time. You have to give big price, which means time to earn the money. Right? It doesn't come easy to get something of great value. If you want you know, uh, uh, a graduate degree in some field, what do you have to do? Keep learning. Keep your time and energy. It doesn't come. You want to live in a mansion. What do you do? You have to work at it. Right? So there is somebody, no, 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 this person was just born into it. We know. They worked at it. Do so much good karma in their past lives, they were granted this fortune. It is not by random nature. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, okay, I'm going to shortcut this process for all of you. I want you to shortcut this process. By chanting the holy names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 By chanting the holy names of the Lord, this single process, one dimension, that's it. You can achieve and obtain his greatest gift. And thus, he established the Yuga Dharma, chanting of the Holy Names. But, what is our, I can at least say my own, uh, challenge in that statement? We commit the fifth offense of chanting the Holy Names of the Lord. What is the fifth offense in chanting the holy names of the Lord? Anyone else? Instead of chanting, it's repeating it, like imagining it. 
to consider the glories of chanting the holy names of the Lord to be imagination. Do you think you one can obtain Krishna frame of this greatest thing by just chanting the holy name of Lord? Hey, we must say, no, what else? There must be something else. There must be something else. To not ascribe the appropriate value to the holy names. So when Srila Rupa Goswami gives all these different practices of devotional service and method of devotion, they are actually all centered around helping us build our faith in the potency of the holy name. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you can get this greatest of gift with the simplest of process, chanting the holy names of the Lord. And um, Krishna Skizaraj Goswami states in, in this very powerful verse, this is verse number 79. One who says that 10 million Ashwamedha sacrifices are equal to chanting the holy names of Lord Krishna is undoubtedly an atheist. He is sure to be punished by Yamaraj. <laughs> now we know in Srimad Bhagavatam. Prithu Maharaj was such a potent, powerful king. And he set out to complete 100 Ashwamedha Yagyas. And upon completing 99 such Yagyas, there was a disturbance. And uh, the, the sacrificial horse was stolen. And thus he was precluded from performing his 100 Ashwamedha Yagyas. And why he was precluded from performing an asha, this hundred, was because that hundred mark was a very um, exclusive achievement and accomplishment. Very exclusive. So, to perform that type of sacrifice is so much is required. You need brahmanas who can recite mantras. You need... Uh, uh, so much ghee and grains and you have to build a sacrificial arena. You have to invite so many different personalities. You give so much in charity to all the brahmanas who come. It is a extraordinary effort to do one, sometimes to do three, to do a hundred. But one who says that 10 million ashramita sacrifices, 10 million not 100, not 3, not one, 10 million are equal to chanting of the holy name of Lord Krishna. They are undoubtedly an atheist. So, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has truly given this most rarest and potent gift that the holy name. And the reason they are accessible, the holy names, because Nidja Sharva Shaktis. He has said that all of his Shakti, all of Krishna's energy, where do they reside? In the holy name. All of them, Sarva, Sarva Shaktis, all of his energy, it resides in his holy name. So when we chant Krishna, we are invoking the full, complete energy of the Supreme Lord. When we chant Hare, we're invoking the Shakti Tattva, Shrimati Radharani. And that process, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just, to, and what kind of education do we need to be able to chant the Holy Names of the Lord? What type of wealth do we need? What type of, you know, societal status do we need? Age, Race, gender, anything? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says there are no hard and fast rules for chanting. But what is our greatest misfortune? It's not COVID. What is our greatest misfortune? Huh? Not having the attraction to us. Nur Deva, I'm so unfortunate I have no attraction for the Holy Names of the Lord. That is our greatest misfortune. 
So when we uncover our misfortune, what do we try to do? Sincerely try to sincerely fix it. Yeah. Right? We first have to know what is our misfortune. We think our misfortune is not enough wealth, not enough food, not enough shelter, not enough sex life, not enough sleeping, not enough fame, not enough intelligence, not enough beauty, not enough this, not... That's what we ascribe as our misfortune. But what is our real, only real misfortune? Not having a strong attachment to our own misery. So in Gorpuni Made, how are we going to develop the strong attachment to the Holy Name of the Lord? Surrender. We're going to beg Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Please help me have faith in this process of rebirth. This is difficult to find it, to build attraction for the Holy Name, is it not? How many of us enthusiastically like to change? No, we finish our rounds and <laughs> done. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Right? That's, that's, that's okay. That's our sadhana practice. So how to come to the point of having this deep attraction? Who's going to make it happen for us? Anything difficult becomes very easy. easy. When? We approach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the best thing we can pray for and go upon him. Is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you have said, Krishna Prema, this is the greatest. You came yourself to give this lamenting, you haven't given it before. It must be something special. I am a fool. I don't understand it, but I'll take that at face value. And you've given access to this Krishna Prema by the chanting of the holy names. But, Duradeva, I have no attraction for you. But by your mercy, Please bestow the intelligence upon me to have faith in chanting of the Holy Name, to understand even a small fraction of this potency. And by doing so, I know I will then find perfection of life. So this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to teach us. And if we see his pastimes, from the immediate time he appeared, he appeared on a full moon day. But he appeared at the time of a eclipse. Now we ordinarily understand eclipses are inauspicious. But everything Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did holistically from beginning to end was to get us to chant. So what do intelligent people do during an eclipse? They chant. So his appearance, when he appeared in Navadvi, the whole town in Navadvi was engaged in chanting the holy names of the Lord. So his own appearance was inaugurated with the chanting of the Holy Names of the Lord. He would cry incessantly. Now how the Supreme Personality of God had to cry. We cry when we want something we can't have. That's when we cry. What Krishna could want that he can't have? Anything? So why he cried incessantly? Because when he cried, all the elderly friends of Sachimata, what they would do? They would ch chant and sing the holy names of the Lord while cutting them. So to engage them in chanting of the holy names, he would cry. And as soon as they started chanting, he would smile on them. And as soon as they stopped, what he would do? <laughs> and so what the residents of, of Navadri and Ekwa were doing 24-7? Chanting the holy names of the Lord. And why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did that? To get everybody to chant. He inaugurated the Sankirtana movement with all the associates all night long. What they would do? Some elaborate puja, some big yagyas. What would they do? Harinama Sankirtana. They would chant in ecstasy and perform. Congregational chanting of the holy names of the Lord. When he instructed Lord Nityananda, you go out and you go door to door and you beg each and every householder to take to the process of devotional service. What he would beg them to do? Chant the holy names of the Lord. 
as he was traveling through the forest on his journeys, what was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself doing? Chanting. Every pastime he did, he was doing to increase our attraction and attention to the chanting of the Holy Name. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed so many beautiful pastimes. You know, as a, in his childhood pastimes as we see them, they mimic and look a lot like Krishna's pastimes. He performed you know, many sweet pastimes. Um, once um, a snake had come into the courtyard and it had coiled up in and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a small baby, Limai at the time. We, they called him Limai because he was born, appeared under a lean tree. Um, so his astro astrologically given name was Ishrambara, which means the maintainer. But so he, um, he might uh, lie down on the coil of the snake. And who he was receiving the snake as? Ananda Shesh. So the residents uh, saw, oh my God. What happened? And you know, the snake quickly ran away and they tied like a nice like, good luck charm on Nimai. And the Navandas Thakur comments that you know when we hear this very short pastime, just it, that's it. That short pastime, we give the benediction, that when we hear, it drives away the snakes of our material desires. He compares our material attachments to like snakes. Very dangerous. So by that you know, simple pastime, once two thieves came and they tried to take, uh, they saw Nimai dress with golden ornaments and jewels and necklaces and earrings. And they thought, oh, this is a boy, Let's, we'll take him away. So they took him on his shoulders and they were walking and they were going to take him deep into the forest and you know, to keep him quiet, they offered him one Sunday dish and said, butter him up a little bit. You know, of course, he's a supreme personality of Godhead. And so they were trying to go deep into the forest and, and Krishna decided that oh, well, I'll play my you know, illusory energy, my maya on them. And so they were walking and walking and walking and they saw, oh, we've just reached our house deep in the jungle. And when they set Nimai down, where were they? Right back at Jagannath Misha's house. Right where they started. And they were going, what? How did this happen? We've been walking and walking to our house. They were, began to try to take off the jewels. And, uh, and uh, they were bewildered. And the point of this pastime for us is that Krishna's energy is very bewildering. Maya can convince us of things that are startling. But by taking to the process of devotional service, all of that can be overcome. And Krishna received the two thieves as carrying him. He told the uh, residents of Nadri, oh, th this, this, these two gentlemen had, had saved me. I would gotten lost on my way to the Ganges. And now they have brought me home. And they carried me. They did not even make me walk. <laughs> How magnanimous uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is. He used to perform lots of mischief. So though he never proclaimed himself to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you know, he would go to the Ganges um, after school with his friends. And what do boys do uh, with their friends and not in the presence of parents? They are very straight and sit down and do nothing. <laughs> of course, they, they, they do, do lots of fun mischief. So um, they would swim in the uh, Ganges and sport and, you know, many brahmanas uh, would come and they would set up their worship um, um, uh, places right on the banks, and they would go and take bath, and they would come. Then they, and, and Nimai would perform all kinds of mischief. So one day they lodged a whole list of complaints to uh, Jagannath Mishra that you know your son when I'm chanting Gayatri in the uh, in the river, it's very auspicious to chant Gayatri half submerged in any uh, auspicious. River, that's very uh, potent to chant Gayatri and such. So the Brahmanas would go and they'd chant Gayatri. And Nehemiah would sneak up from behind them and pull their legs and they would fall into the water <laughs> while they were chanting. Or he would, um, while they were in the water taking their bath, he would go and the, they would have all the puja set up with all of the boga 
you know, different sandalwood paste and wicks. And Nehemiah himself would sit on the altar and begin eating all the offerings and everything. And then when they would come and chant, he said, What? Well, you have called me to eat. And I think, well, who's the supreme there calling Lord Vishnu? But he has come as, as Lord Nehemiah. Uh, and even like this, he would perform many, uh, you know, he would, he would um, when, the, when the prominence would come out, they'd be fully bathed, and he would take some sand and throw it on them, and so they'd have to go back into the river. So all these things he would do. So one time when they went to, uh, to Jagannath Mishra, he said, you know, this is your son he's constantly doing, and he's at the uh, river right now at the Ganges doing, you go catch him red handed So Jagannath Mishra goes and takes a stick, and he runs <laughs> to, the, to the area. But he's all-knowing, he's the Supreme Lord. So he goes and leaves the other way. And he tells his friends, hey, when my father comes, tell him I did not come this time. I went straight home. And you know, he might know, you know, fathers are smart, they'll think. Mm -hmm. So what he did on the way home, so on the way home, he took uh, some ink from his uh, books and smeared ink on himself. Because when, when kids would go to school in those days, they'd be, they'd be covered in ink, and then they'd go and take their bath. So by covering himself in ink, he said, oh, my father would know I didn't go to the Ganges to, to take bath. <laughs> so <laughs> like this, he might would play games with all the uh, elderly brahmanas. And of course, um, they were relishing their sweet pastimes. Just as Krishna played so many pastimes with um, uh, the residents of Vrindavan, uh, he might perform you know, many, many uh, amazing pastimes. Uh, he, he stayed uh, here for 48 years um, and just looking at the clock. And his first uh, 24 years, he remained in Navadri. Um, and he performed, you know, for the first 20 years, uh, primarily stayed in Grahastha life. He was uh, kind of a pundit. He was teaching Sanskrit, uh, running a very successful school. Uh, he was a scholar, defeating so many people. But he wasn't yet uh, propagating um, this pure devotional service. He was waiting and waiting. And after uh, 20 years, then he really began um, the uh, Sankirtan movement. And so for four years, uh, maintained uh, and, and launched that Sankirtan movement in Navadri. And then he took sannyas. And we know he took sannyas. Um, why? Uh, for the purpose of teaching all of us, um, again, the principles of devotional service. And then... Most of his pastimes from sannyas forward are covered in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So Chaitanya Bhagavat, uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur, has covered all many of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes the first 24 years. And, um, and uh, Krishna Skavira Swami has covered the final 24 years. There's a little bit of overlap uh, when they have covered some pastimes, but that's generally so. If you want to read more about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, this is where you can see more. Uh, but in the end, remember what is our greatest treasure and what is our greatest misfortune. And if we approach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, on Gaur Purnima Day, we can obtain both. Resolution of our misfortune and capture this greatest treasure, this jewel of Krishna Prema, which Krishna himself wanted to come and give. And we are most fortunate because the storehouse of Krishna Prema is unlimited. And so he was not stingy in who he was giving it to. When we have something in limited supply, we are very cautious how to hand it out. But in this case, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's storehouse of Krishna Prema is unlimited. And Srila Prabhupada, by his unlimited mercy, is continuing to pour out uh, from that storehouse. And that is why he encouraged he was so convinced of this mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he, he encouraged that every home should have morning time in their home. He said, even if people keep them in a bookshop and just have them as dolls, they're so merciful and so potent that one will obtain unlimited benefit. So I pray all of you will bring morning time into your home. Don't worry about thinking whether I'm qualified or not to serve. Let me assure you, you are not qualified to serve. None of us are. You'll have no scope of ever being qualified to serve morning time. But, 
by the mercy and prayers of Srila Prabhupada, who encouraged all of us to take and bring on the diet to our home. Whatever imperfections, whatever misqualification we have, if we worship through the potency of Guru Parampara, all will be perfect. And that's why he established Gordon Diabetes all over the world. And we are particularly blessed because he personally installed our Gordon Diabetes in the temple. And many of you know, those are the last deities in the world to the Prabhupada's had personally installed. So, how we can calculate the fortune that we can go and offer our obeisances to these most potent, most potent Gornitai deities, we have no idea. But we can just start to appreciate a few of them. And this is why this is the most important day in our Vedic calendar. Very auspicious. Great opportunity, and I pray we all can together make many, many steps forward in devotional service, falling at the feet of Rama Mahaprabhu, Srila Prabhupada, and Guru Dev, and we pray we can obtain this mercy and this love of God in the simplest process and overcome our misfortune of not having a traffic in the family. Thank you very much, Srila Prabhupada. Any questions or comments, discussion? Yeah, it's the same. I mean, Prabhupada writes uh, that there's some conversation about how the the mantra was, you know, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 and it was given in when it's come down in the verse. But there are other parts where we see in the Kali Shantra and Upanishad where that mantra is given, where it's stated. So we understand that it, is, it was given as is, but both are fine. But, you know, Prabhupada gives the example of a circle. In a circle, what's the beginning and what's the end? It doesn't really matter. Uh, right? But we know how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught this. He is Krishna himself, so he is the supreme authority. And that's what makes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings so unequivocal. He's the supreme Lord himself. So whatever he gave, we can take with full confidence and faith. Chant and pray for some attraction to the holy names of the Lord. Mm -hmm.